Oh my goodness, look at these amazing clouds that are coming in. I don't even want to know what kind of storm this is going to bring. It's so scary and inspiring all at the same time because I know that the earth is going to give us water for the garden. Good morning guys. It is Saturday. I am walking back here to get the garden ready for another storm. Yet another storm that is coming. And I discovered that this beautiful poppy that I um, planted some seed in has emerged and bloomed for me. It's got some hoverflies in there, which is a great thing. Um, more poppies are getting ready to, to actually pop. I have Queen Sophia marigolds that have popped. And I have some different uh, zinnias, some dahlias, there's calendula in here, my chamomile or chamomile, chamomile, depends on uh, where you're from, I guess, it is starting to pop. And basically what I'm doing today in preparing for this storm is I'm going to take a walk back to the main garden and I'm just going to inspect the beds and see what's going on so that I can see what's hanging down uh, that might need to be trussed or re-secured. And with me, I'm going to be carrying a bag of materials that I'm going to repurpose. Um, these avocado bags, I buy at least two or three bags of avocados from Costco a week. And this nylon mesh is very durable and it's soft. And it's one more thing that I'm going to just repurpose and save it from the landfill. And I'm going to wrap it around my tomato stalks and secure it up to the trellis as I go back. Because I do know that there are a, uh, a few pieces that need to be trussed up. Here's some jute that came uh, with a package. I'm going to repurpose that. There's um, all sorts of things in this bag. Mainly mainly reusable stuff though so we'll just take a walk back get a garden update while we do that and see what's going on in our backyard here oh check it out we have lots of flowers on the chadwick cherry this is a prolific tomato bearing bearer uh, i highly recommend this if you like cherry tomatoes we are also battling lantern flies it's, oh, they, they emerged yesterday. It was just, it was, it was terrible. More chamomile. Looks like it has, looks like it has some strange aphids all over it though. This is a new plant for me this year. Now, luckily I did see that we had a ladybug. Um, so hopefully the ladybugs will make their way over here. Now this plant is also known for being a trap crop. And um, I'm growing it to get the flowers because we have parrots and the parrots scream and the chamomile does keep them calm um, so we use it as a medic medicinal when we buy it from uh, Sprouts which is it's a, a Whole Foods store that sells a lot of things in bulk as far as grains and nuts and berries and things like that so I buy the organic chamomile from them but now I can see why it's considered a trap crop and if I have to sacrifice this chamomile to the aphids, that's okay, because at least they're not all over my tomatoes. This is the nemesis of, of my life right now. And they jump. Ugh. Sorry about that, guys. I don't know what you guys are doing for the, uh, the spotted lanternflies, but I hope you're doing something, because I, I think this is just the beginning of the horrors of... It's like, it's like an apocalyptic plague of insects. Um, these cucumbers are doing really well. Again, these are the, the Burples Beauties. This is, look, lantern flies all over my cucumbers. So I think, you know, I, I read that someone locally was using a shop vac to get them off of plants. So I think we may need to, not a shop vac, just like a little handheld vacuum. So this way we're not like attacking the plant trying to get the lantern flies off. So, but this is heartbreaking to know that we're having this wonderful um, 
very successful growth of something and you see some sort of an insect all over it. So we'll send Farmer John out to do that. Now they're not on the, have I been out of focus all this time? We're not, they're not on this one, which I think is a burpless and they're not on the market more, which is interesting. Now the slender burpless over here is supposed to not attract different bugs. So, um, you know, this lanternfly situation, we're going to be learning as we go. So, but anyway, coming back here, last night we harvested a whole load of strawberries, uh, and they were absolutely beautiful. You can see there's still a bunch more to come off, a bunch that are just turning colors. Um, the lanternflies are not really bothering the strawberries but we have been pulling them off of the thornless blackberries. Not seeing any in the blueberries right now. And John will come in and inspect everything here in the berry patch. Strawberries are looking good. The corn has mostly rebounded from the storm. And hey, you guys, if you've been following along and you've been watching the videos, um, go back and look at the last video. We can link it in the description below and you'll see that we had to come out here and put the corn back up because something came along and knocked it down. Well, it was a storm. We knew that overnight, but we found out a few hours after we actually made our video that an F1 tornado had gone over the area and we believe that that F1 tornado was actually over our yard because the corn was down in a, a spiral shape. Um, but John was able to write it all back up and it looks like it was very forgiving. So things uh, are really progressing here. We have another big storm coming, so I have to make sure, you know, if there's anything that has to be harvested, um, there could be because the zucchini, zucchinis are moving along, you can see that. And these are the kind of plants where you come out one day and all of a sudden you have a bunch of zucchinis especially after uh, a lot of rain. They just take up a lot of water and then before you know it, it's like use it or lose it. So, but they're doing beautifully. We also have to inspect the underneath of the leaves for any eggs that could be on here because now, now that the zucchini is actually starting to grow a stalk, this is when the squash bugs come and they start boring in so they can put down their grubs into the stalk of the zucchini and that that's when you get the wilting and it's it's toast basically um, <clears throat> these cucumbers are the munchers they're doing really great today we have so many tomatoes so, oh little bird this poor little bird oh, she basically lives back here and I, I don't I keep interrupting her I'm not sure where exactly she's living, but she's keeping my bug population down. That's good too, but I feel like there's something wrong with her. I, I leave her alone, but sadly we just watched a, a hawk take off with another bird and its talons. So I worry about her back here. We have bald eagles. We have various hawks, uh, lots of raptor activity out here. So I'm always worried about my little birds. So this is buckwheat and also acting as more of a trap crop. The aphids are going to the, um, the buckwheat, which is also known as soba. Now this is interesting because last year all of this actually repelled bugs. This year it seems to be working as an actual trap. So we will, um, have to keep an eye on this progress and see how the garden changes. I mean, you just you have to be prepared to monitor everything that's growing and know what's working for you and what's working against you. Um, these tomatoes are the Borghese tomatoes and there's lots of flowers on them. This is an extraordinarily prolific fruit bearing plant. Now there's 
a different type of aphid back here now. I'm trying to trying to get a picture of that. Lots of new bugs this year. So this is really interesting. Yesterday I came back and I actually saw baby tomatoes on this plant, but I'm not really sure where they went off to. The main tomato bed here is doing incredible. The um, This is the Hungarian heart or ox heart. They are growing so quickly. Again, I started all of these from seed. I think I have eight of these in this row. Um, first year for us with this guy. They are a little bit leggy. So for instance, in here, I was talking about having to come out and stake and truss and make sure everything's up. Because if we get these crazy winds or even just an oversaturation of water, it's gonna weigh all that down. Uh, lots of flowers on this Hungarian heart. I'm really excited because these fruits are supposed to weigh over a pound a piece. So lots of tomatoes on the next level in the Parks Whopper. And lots underneath of the canopy. This stuff is all looking pretty good. My goodness how time goes when you're trying to film everything in your garden and give an education. Hi little bird. There she is again. Oh my goodness. She is the sweetest little creature. She just walks around while I'm out here inspecting everything. I don't rush her off and she doesn't rush me off. These are the Abruzzi pear or San Marzano lungo. I really still am debating on what I actually have growing here, but lots of flowers. They're going to take off after this rain comes. Amish pace here, getting ready to do its thing. Enormous fruit that it bears. Um, gets very, very heavy. So this is an example of having to come out and add support systems. So the other day I had filmed that it got a little leggy but those legs were not tall enough to get up onto the main trellis here. So I'm just adding some support as a side cage. Um, and this is the square tomato cages that you can buy. And this works because I was actually able to extend it out and use it as a row instead of a cylinder cage. And I'm gonna add, I have a second one that I found in the shed and I'm gonna put it on this side to make sure that all of this stuff here stays up nice and straight so when the storm comes through we'll be uh we'll be prepared for it so so all right guys i'm gonna let you go because i can just talk and talk and talk but i want to thank you for whoops stopping by our backyard garden today look at the lettuce ah oh, i just want to show you everything look at the lettuce i am so excited oh i just love this and side note we thought this could be a marigold then I thought it was a carrot, then I thought it was a marigold. Now I think it might be a mugwort or Ar Artemis, that I think it's called, Artemisia. A um, lot of uh, butterhead lettuce, a lot of Great Lakes, uh, rom romaine lettuces. Um, there's tons of varieties in here. They're just absolutely beautiful. And the Merlot, oh, the colors of it, really beautiful. Dragon's eggs, cucumbers have their tendrils growing happily. They're gaining height. This is a first year for these. So we are uh, waiting to see what these are gonna do. But here she is, guys. Look at the sky. Getting ready to open up. The, the rain is like a blessing. And then at the same time, it just strikes fear in me because we just, we don't know what's gonna happen. I'm trying to maintain this garden and keep it happy. So, okay guys, thanks for checking in. We'll be back with updates after the storm just to see how our preparation uh, secured everything. And on one of our next videos, we'll be doing a tutorial on how to trust your tomatoes. So please stop back to see that. Have a great day, have a great weekend. Eat healthy guys, grow something. Take care.